Good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. So we have our EX270 LC-5 Hitachi Excavator in the shop this morning. And unfortunately, I went out yesterday morning to get it, to bring it up here and get it ready because we've had it out back digging in the pond. We're gonna get it ready to go strip off topsoil off of a horizontal well for irrigation. Well, unfortunately, when I walked back there to get it, it had a bunch of gear oil under the car body in the center. So what happened was the seal around the rotary manifold, the rotary manifold is how the oil gets down to the track motors to run the tracks. That black seal right there is leaking and it's leaking rainwater. And we've had a lot of rain in the past couple months and we had really, really cold temperatures for about a week. What happened was that rainwater was in the slough ring, which is in this area here. Slough ring is where all the grease is at for the swing gear. There is a cover, I leave that cover loose to let out if there is any rainwater that gets in there. But apparently that cover was covered in grease and it didn't drain. Well, when all that ice got in there, it heaved up and it took out the swing box seal at the bottom and allowed all the oil to run out of the swing box. So all the gear oil underneath the excavator was the oil out of the swing box. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that swing motor out, we're gonna reseal that, or swing motor and gear box, we're gonna pull that out, reseal it, and then we're also going to change out the rotary manifold for a new one that we have here laying at the shop, which that has needed to be changed for a while now. So the way you know that these excavators need something done with the rotary manifold is one, you'll have a track that gets doggy or you'll have both tracks that get doggy. And you will have also oil coming out of the swing bearing. Now this one right now has hydraulic oil and gear oil coming out. That's why it's kind of a reddish because that gear oil is kind of is a red gear oil. It'll it'll boil out of here and when it's just hydraulic oil, it'll be like a foamy looking like a yellowish hydraulic oil look to it if that makes sense and it'll drip just like that all the way around the swing bearing. So that's a that's a sign that your rotary manifold is leaking oil into your slew ring and also like i said the tracks will get real doggy you'll go to climb over something and they'll just stall out it's because the oil is going around that rotary manifold and coming right out the top or it's sharing oil between the ports inside of it so it's just not going to hold the full hydraulic pressure to send to the track motors to make them run properly so We'll get that rotary manifold out and we'll go through that more. I'll show you how it works. So the whole myth that you've heard, some of you that doesn't, or some of you that haven't been around excavators, people will try to say, and it's kind of a joke too, people will say, oh, if you swing too long in one direction, the top will thread off and it'll fall off. No, that's not how it works. That's not how it works at all. Now, years and years and years ago, there were excavators out there that were chain swing. They had two cylinders, one on, on each end of a chain, and it would pull back and forth and it'd swing the excavator. So they could only go so far one way and so far the other way. But your modern 360 degree hydraulic excavator can spin around and around and around all day long and never fall apart. It's just kind of a joke. So anyways, let's get started on this and get it tore apart. Okay, so we're up on top of the excavator now. We're gonna start tearing these lines off. We need to get these two lines off. These are the feed lines for the swing motor. Get these off, we'll get some mess stoppers in them. Now I am wearing a pair of Brunt work boots. You gotta see what the rave is all about on these Brunt work boots. Madison bought me a pair for Christmas. So far, I like them. Just put them on this morning and they feel pretty good on my feet. So, originally I was in contact with Brunt 
back before my grandpa passed away and uh, we were working on a they were gonna send me a pair of boots to try out well things I had to uh, take care of with family and all that I just kind of kind of let that whole deal fall through and I thought well it's probably too late now to try a pair of their boots you know to get back in contact with them so I just kind of let it go well then for Christmas Madison got me a pair of their boots so I'm gonna try them out see what they're like I see they look like they got some pretty good work wear I'm gonna have to get uh, maybe I can get these bolts up and just spread that clamp and get to that one get that hose loosened up and roll it out of the way Need my cordless ratchet. I know a lot of a lot of YouTubers are wearing the brunt work wear, and a lot of guys on TikTok is wearing it. I figured I'd give it a try. These are supposed to be equivalent to my thorough good boots, as far as design. I like a real tall boot to support my ankle. I got kind of weak ankles. I just look at a frozen chunk of dirt in my ankle rolls. Go ahead and just tap that down a little bit. Get a mess stopper in that hose. Keep the dirt out of it. I need to mark that. A zip tie here. We'll make this hose orange. Put an orange zip tie on that. And then we'll put a orange zip tie on this flange half. So we know that hose goes there. Now we can't mix them up. Because if we mix those up, you'll go to swing the way you think you're gonna swing, and it'll swing the opposite. All right. Can't get to that one. Tap one up, tap one down, and it should fall apart. You will just have to get creative putting it back together. We'll get all new, should get all new O-rings from them hoses too while we're at it. Oh, knocked my mess stopper out. Should be able to pry that up. There we go. That one. Oh, that's why they're not working because they're not going in deep enough. Because of these 90s. There we go. That's better. Put him down there. All right. Some more lines we need to mark here. Need to at least mark one of these. Dad and George are getting the service truck up here. So we can reach through the back door and pull this swing motor out. There. I say swing motor, but when I say swing motor, it, it entails everything. Gearbox, swing motor, all the above. I had all this really nice and pressure washed. Thank you. 
over there. Thing about working on excavators, there's always plenty of oil to deal with. Now, I gotta get that one off. That one's gonna be fun. Oh boy. Yeah. I'm gonna go find a longer wrench for that one. That one's tight. I'm gonna try something first here. Oh, there we go. Oh boy, do I have a mess up big enough for that one? I think I do. Good way to get a new pair of boots waterproofed. That's why. Forgot to relieve the pressure in the tank. Figured it sat in there long enough that it lost it. All right, I'm gonna grab my mess stop where I dropped. And then uh, get the big impact and we'll uh, start taking the bolts out. Well, I got the Milwaukee one inch impact and inch and quarter socket. Let's see if uh, this cordless impact will buzz these bolts out. Bring the bolts down in here. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> We're on easy street now. As long as it'll stay fitting all the way around. Here's what the bolts look like. That's all they are. All right, I'm gonna finish getting these bolts out and then we'll be able to lift it out. Well, I got all the bolts out. I had two bolts back here that were real bare. So I took this piece of round bar and kept dropping it on top of the bolt heads. And finally I got them broke loose with the impact. Give them a little bit of shock with that round bar and they backed out. So dad and George are getting the service truck ready we're gonna back it in here get the boom through the doorway drop the cable down I'm gonna choke this uh, swing motor and should be able to pop it right up out of that hole and uh, swing it to the side all right let's try that jack stands. Probably want all four of them. He 
can see the gear oil drizzling out of it. Oh yeah, you got plenty of room. You got No, you've got that much room. Okay, so we went ahead and we pressure washed this all off because it was pretty nasty. And you can see right here the spring for the seal is just hanging out. That seal is totally screwed up. So we're going to take this ring off and pop that off and our seal should be under there. The gear oil that's in here is just nasty. It's like uh, George says it reminds him of deer blood. And it really does. It's some stringy, stringy stuff. Yeah, look at that. It looks like you're gutting a deer or something. Probably that with. George, you want to get want to get one of the big bars possibly? Got all the bolts out. Pretty big piece of cast. Yeah, I'll try that. One of them I said. Yeah, let's see what that on there I guess. Alright, so there's our seal. Yep, it's junk. Okay, so that just seals on that surface right there so you don't have to take any of this apart. That's, that's nice. Take that and clean up parts washer. Well, George took it over the parts washer and got it all cleaned up and you can see that the seal has been pushed upwards. Right there. There's that blood red oil. Right there, it was pushed up. It That was actually pushed in there, but I peeled it out and it popped up. So that tells me that the ice came up and forced it up around the shaft and uh, just ruined that seal. And even if it would have thawed out, it would have still been junk because it was already rolled. Yeah. There's a spring that goes around the seal. So we're going to have to go to West Side Tractor in South Bend and get us a seal ordered. Who knows? Maybe they'll have it on hand. But we'll take it up there. We'll show them what we got and make sure we get the right parts. So now we can move on to pulling the rotary manifold out. But I'm going to do that after lunch because I'm going to get really nasty underneath the excavator taking that out. So... We'll do that after lunch. Where are we eating lunch today? Long John Silvers? Sure. 
Maybe that Tim Allen's King Gyros. Maybe we can talk Dad into that. We'll see what happens. So I didn't take a video of after it came out of the hole, but that's where it goes in. You can see why they call it the slew ring, because it is a slew down in there. It's pretty nasty. So there's your uh, swing bearing gear, your turntable gear right there. And that's what the swing motor locks into and swings the excavator around. Okay. Well, we got our parts. We figured we'd take a quick stroll around the parking lot and see what they've got. Dad, we need that 350. Yep. Wide tires, scraper special tractor. I'd take that. That'd be a nice replacement for the old 850 we had. New Talbert low boy. New 210P. Some 700L. What's this one? 850L. Nice in that Talbert logo. Yeah. Quite a collection of mini excavators. I like them wheels on that trailer. Nine RX with a pan behind it. Nice haul truck. Looks to be brand new. It's got a tailgate. John Deere 460. Side dump trailers for hauling dirt behind tractors. Got some turf tires on that loader. Skid steers, track loaders. Now it's time to go get some lunch. Well, we're back from lunch. I'm going to start tearing this rotary manifold out. I wanted to do this after lunch because I'm going to get filthy. So I got my crow's foot and my half inch ratchet here. I'm using this to break these lines loose. Because of the situation down in here, things are tight. So... I mean, tight space to work. Oh, that one's not going. Hit it with the air hammer a little bit. Sometimes that wakes them up. Sometimes that definitely helps loosen them. Get the crow's foot on it where I'm comfortable. Try that. Oh, that one's tight. The other one's loosened up pretty easily. Oh, that one's just not one to go. Let me take the other ones off out of the way. Yeah, I'll get that one. 
Well, now with those out of the way, now we can get to that one a little easier. Got more room to work here. Get on it a little better. There we go. There it loosened up. Well, I thought it did. Yeah, it did. Still need to turn for the wrench. Still pretty stiff. So, all we got left to do is get the bar off that holds it from turning, which is that right there. And I got the brake line I got to pull off. And then we got to go underneath. We got to disconnect four hoses under there. And it unbolts and it falls down out the bottom. We'll tie, we'll tie a rope or something to the top of it and I'll have uh, George lower it down through so it don't just fall down. It's kind of cramped working conditions in here. There we go. Now I just gotta take the small lines off. Take this bar out of here. And something you want to look at on these bars is the wear on the end where they go in this fork here to keep them from turning. If they're worn really bad, you want to weld them up till they fit tight in that fork. That way every time you swing, it's not working this back and forth and allowing that uh, rotary manifold to work back and forth like that because that'll actually eventually cause issues with that seal right there this one's not too bad i've seen them a lot worse but we'll weld that up a little bit and uh square things back off so it don't move I'll take that george thank you get these brake lines off let's use a crescent wrench on these or an adjustable wrench Let's take that line off and we'll have to even thread the adapter out. There's another one on this side. One of these is K-string for the track motors in this rotary manifold. That one didn't break loose. I'm going to need a second wrench on it. Well, we got all our hoses off. Here is our problem. This is our leak right here. See, I can poke my finger in there. So that means water was getting in there and getting right into the slew ring. Let's see if I can get that peel out of there. Uh, pocket pry bar, see if I can lift that up. Get it popped up out. There we go. That's all it is. go that's junk we got a new one we'll put a new one in we put the new manifold in well we're under the excavator now and we are in the belly of the beast this is up inside of the car body that the tracks run on this is the bottom side of the rotary manifold right here we have our case drain return lines these small hoses here are brake lines. They run to each track motor in the track frame or car body. And then these return or uh, case drain lines just return excess oil that leaks past the track motors. So you can actually tell the health of a track motor by taking these lines off. One, uh, you take one off at a time, you have to cap it. And you can actually put this in a bucket or 
a measuring device of some sort and you can actually catch the oil and see how much that track motor is bypassing and that's a way that you can tell if that track motor is healthy or not. You can also do that with feller buncher heads and uh, uh, mulching heads on skid steers. You can well pretty much do it with any any uh, hydraulic motor I suppose that has a case string. Alright, so we're going to start by taking our brake lines off here get these off out of the way. As you can see somebody's replaced a hose. I'm pretty sure I did. And that hose has a different size hex nut. Here we go again with the oil. So I get a drain pan under here. This is probably one of the nastier jobs to do on an excavator because you're laying under here and it, gravity's doing its thing and it's bringing the oil down on top of you and there's no stopping it. You just got to get it drained out. I really do like working on excavators. I think they're probably one of my favorite things to work on. But they're just messy. There we go. 22 will take that off. So, I actually don't have the right rotary manifold on hand. I thought I did. The one we have is for a little Richard DX60 or a smaller machine like that. I guess I didn't even think about the port size and checking that before we left, but West Side Tractor has three on hand that are the right size for this machine. So, we'll just run back up and get one. No big deal. Just a little more more road travel. Run up there in the morning and grab one. But we have to have this one out because there is a core charge on it. I gotta get them off. I'm gonna wait and let that drain so I can get a better pull on that wrench. It's just in a bad position right now for me to pull on it. I'll let that drain a little bit and then I can move the pan out of my way. Well, it's dripped off about as much as it's going to drip off. We're going to start getting these uh, hoses off. So I got a crow's foot here and my long ratchet. We're going to use that like a wrench since it's a lot longer than any wrench I've got. So let's see if we can break these loose. There's one. Let's go above it, try to get that next one. These hoses aren't original, these have been changed once. So they're not going to be super tight. Yeah, they're not original. Oh man. Let me get a different angle on that. Yeah, that's about all we're gonna get. I have to get an offset wrench on that. Let's see if I can jerk it without smashing my hands on the car body. There we go. Got that one. There it goes. Just get this one completely out of the way. Drain pan up there. Nope, it's starting to leak already. The secret is to only have your arm up there long enough that the oil doesn't run down your armpit. get that one out of the way and I can get to that next one up. Let's try our last big line here. I want to make a set of wrenches that are extended. Extendable? Extended already. Like make them three foot long. Alright George, I might need your help. Yeah, if I can figure out you need something like if I can figure out how to do it. Just like the ratchets. Yeah, where you pull the thing and they Yeah. Yeah, maybe. So if you need something like where three foot will fit. Yeah. But thirty inches will fit. 
Okay, George, can you reach to help me pull? Without getting all nasty. There we go, I think we got it. I think it slid off. I think it slid off. Nope, it broke loose. Broke loose and rolled off, so what it is. Alright. Got to take four bolts out with the impact first before it falls. You got your strap on on top. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> All right, I'll finish taking these lines off and then we'll drop it out. All okay, right, we're gonna start taking the bolts out. We're gonna drop this rotary manifold out. You ready, George? Okay. Bolt number one. There's a draining oil. Bolt number two. Just ran my glasses over. Creeper. Ew. It's getting nasty out of here. Bolt number three. Ready, George? Last bolt. Bolt number four. All right. So now we can drop it down, and I can get them brake lines off. It'll be closer to the ground for me. You can go ahead and drop it a little more. It stopped. Oh, okay. Uh, leave it right there for now. Let me see if I can get those lines broke loose. They're small, so it shouldn't take much. Oh, that stinks. It's got mud around it. And oil and everything else. Pfft. Oh, right in the face, a blunt crap. There we go. Break that one loose. Thread it off. Well, a little stinker. Isn't it something? The smallest line sometimes can be the biggest boogers. Go ahead and drop it down some more. That one's just not cooperating. That's good right there. Can you hold it there? That'll work. Now I can get to it a little easier. I don't have to reach above my head. There it goes. Alright, lines are off. We can take it out now. Well, it's out. It's out on the track so we can get a good look at it. We'll have to thread these out, thread all these ports out. We need all these adapters. Well, we'll have to see what the new one comes with. I think we'll at least need these four. It might come with these four already in it. It might have that T. We'll have to see what they give us. So that's it. It's out. It's not too bad of a job. It's just a messy job. And it's heavy and pulling on wrenches. But other than that, it's, it's not a bad job, really. I have changed one of these out in the middle of the field. We had one, there's a snap ring that actually holds all this together in here. And the snap ring groove broke off the end and it actually shot this whole gland out. When I hit the track pedals to move, I was trenching for irrigation pipe. And I went to track backwards, and hit the pedals and boom, and oil went everywhere. And it, that whole piece just shot out of there. And the only thing that kept it from flying in the air was the four hoses holding it down. Well six hoses holding it down so that one was fun the worst part was i was partly into my swing when it happened so when we put the new one in it was a bear to get it all lined back up but we got it but oh man was i nasty after that one so 
All right, we'll get this cleaned up. We'll get them out. We'll get the new one tomorrow and possibly make this a two-part episode. We'll see. So, all right, we'll see what happens. Since styling the track, George thought it might be a good idea to demonstrate how this works. So this bottom part here with this flange, this bolts solid into the slew ring or the car body under there, whatever you want to call that area. So this stays solid with the track frame. This part, you've seen that bar that was on here that went out to that fork. This part is what turns inside of this part. So we'll just hold it and I'll show you. So as the excavator swings at the top, oops, sorry, can't quite hold it. Now yeah, let's go this way. Ready? As the excavator swings, that turns like so. Just like that. So that's how it works. Well, before we're done today, we're gonna go ahead and buzz these ports out that we need, or adapter fittings, whatever you wanna call them. See if this works. Oh yeah. Can't use a black impact socket because there's not enough room between these to get it in there. So we have some sacrificial chrome sockets that we're going to use. That one wasn't very tight because I broke it loose when I was trying to get the hoses off. Neither was that one. So we have all new O-rings for all of this so that uh, we'll be able to put it back together when we get the new ones. Um, I don't think we need to take the side ones out. Should all come with it, pretty sure. All right, so I think we're in, in this episode right here. We're going to make a two-part episode out of it because it's going to be too long by the time we put the seal and all that back in. So we'll go ahead and end this one right here. So uh, thank you for watching. Greatly appreciate it. And we'll see you all in the next one. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and hopefully you're going to be looking forward to the next one or the part two of it. So, All right, time to go home and get some dinner. I'm hungry.